I've had this green spot up on my property that I've noticed for like 20 years. And I've always said to myself, you know, I should probably do something about that. I think there's water underneath there. But for whatever reason, I've convinced myself that it just wasn't that important. So consequently, I never really went the extra step to do anything about it. But I've had some folks that have recently inspired me to realize the importance of redundancies in your system. And one of those individuals has a YouTube channel called Life Done Free. And it's been very inspiring to see what he's done on his property um, in developing his systems of redundancy. And so today we're gonna go ahead and open that up and get a good look at it. I'll make an assessment from that point, whether or not it's something that I believe is in my best interest to further develop. But I'm encouraged and I'm hopeful that um, it'll yield fruit. So stick around. wasn't as encouraging as I had hoped, but I'm not discouraged. I actually am seeing a lot of, a lot of moisture, and I believe that's going to start to accumulate over the next 24 hours or so. But I was just investigating over here, and I just noticed down in this section, we were about ready to give up on this side, but uh, just noticed that there's some more wetness down right there, right in that area. So we're gonna go ahead and work ourselves that direction a little bit more and not give up on it quite yet. Yeah, their inspiration out there has really caused me to, to reevaluate and look at what I'm doing here and seeing if there's ways that I can improve uh, my resiliency. But it hasn't quite been 24 hours probably only been about 15 or so we'll see what we got you know we dug this down about three feet now oh, there's there's some water in there for sure that's encouraging yeah but it's only you know two to three inches deep but that's still quite a bit of water over seven and a half feet elevation gain. Not much in the way of PSI, but it would definitely flow downhill. So what we've exposed is about 36 feet of trench here. And it's about on average, about 30 inches deep. I'm gonna do some calculations and kind of just get an idea of how much is accumulated here based on the dimensions. The water's accumulated in here considerably. There's a layer of clay and rock that's acting as an impervious layer beneath about a foot and a half to two feet of topsoil and the water's coming out at that level so i'm pretty optimistic about this being a viable source to further develop the depth of the water up there is around eight inches and it's about a foot and a half down here at this end so the water's going to flow to this direction It'd be pretty sweet if this ran like this all the time, but it's going to be a pretty reduced flow. I mean, I'd be pretty, pretty happy if I got 10 gallons a day. Yeah, I'm looking at this the very next day just to kind of see what kind of outflow that I'm getting. And it's, it's moving, but it's very, very small. Yeah, here's what the flow looks like currently. It doesn't look super impressive, but I'm happy with the fact that there is flow. 
essentially it's going to be a French drain type of a design. I'm going to have a fabric as well as the drain pipe into um, an outflow pipe, and then I will collect it at that point. The fabric that I'm going to be using is basically a non-woven uh, geotextile eight ounce fabric. The pipe that I'm using is a three inch high density polyethylene drain pipe. It has four slots per channel. Um, so my plan is, is I have enough of this that where I'm going to lay it in the trench side by side. I'm going to run two lines and then I'm going to have a single collection point. All the materials for phase one of this project on site. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't lay that fabric in the hole. And then uh, we'll see how far we get with this because I'm not exactly sure how it's going to go. In a properly installed French drain, the lowest thing in the drain should be the pipe. And then on top of that, we will wind up putting the rock itself. We've just put the fabric in, but you can see how the water's already starting to accumulate down in the, in the drain itself. So it's doubled over and it's kind of running duels. Yeah, I have the other end connected to a Y which I'm gonna put a couple of set screws in there. Y is poked out on the other end here through the fabric. This three inch polyethylene drain pipe is being run into SDR sewer pipe, three inch. And then ultimately I wanna get it down to one inch PVC. So in order to do that, I had to get a little creative with the parts that I was using. And so it was somewhat of a scavenger hunt. This is what I came up with. There is an additional adapter on the inside of this this three inch slip coupling, and that takes it from SDR to PVC. And then I've got this is PVC three inch with a bell end. And then there is a three inch to two inch PVC reducer. And then from there, a two inch to one inch PVC. Secured it in there with some Volcom, and then it's all been screwed so that it won't move um, in any regard. I've decided to cap this using wood chips which will allow this to slowly decompose over time. Eventually the native soil will migrate in, cover this up, grasses will return, and over time you won't even know that this trench even exists. Well, I capped this off uh, 24 hours ago. Hey, go ahead. How full is it? It's almost to the top. Okay, we'll get it all the way to the top and then just dump it and then we'll uh, start over again. What are we at? 40 gallons. How much is that? This is 50. All right, cool. 65 gallons. Well, this just stopped at 77 gallons and uh, yeah, I can't tell you how happy that result makes me. I had originally told myself when I started this project that it would be worth it to pursue it and continue if I were to get 10 gallons a day, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you take that out over a year, that's a considerable amount of water. That's 300 gallons a month, 3,600 gallons a year of passively accumulated water. And to me, that's, that's every bit worth it, um, especially because this continues to produce year round in a, in a very dry and, um, you know, kind of a drought stricken zone. We haven't had a lot of rain here in the last two years. And then we had two wet years, then 
it was three years of drought, so it's it's been green the entire time and continued to grow grass at the surface level. 77 gallons, that's going to be a considerable amount of water that we'll have available to us and need to do the figures to see what that's going to be. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. I mean, even if that dropped to 50 gallons, if, if we, the flow was reduced somehow and it was dropped to 50 gallons, that's still a considerable amount of daily accumulation on a secondary water source that, um, yeah, I'm super, super happy. The next step for me is going to be testing this water source to see if it's a potable water source, something that we can use for our consumption, or if it's gonna be just something that I wind up using to water fruit trees and other vegetation on the property and or our livestock. The potability of this water source is largely gonna determine what I do in the next phase of this process. I need to be able to determine what that water use is going to be for thereby, where am I gonna store it and what's gonna be the method of delivery. So really appreciate you guys checking out this video. I hope that in some ways it may be uh, helpful. It might inspire some ideas of your own. Please consider subscribing if you got some value out of this content and stick around for future and upcoming videos. We'll see you in the next one.